But a glory to Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, to ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, to ages of ages. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Brethren in Christ, laudator Jesus Christus in secula. This is Timothy Flanders at the meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome once again to the preparation for the Holy Sacrifice. This is a weekly show for our guild community in which we prepare our souls, our hearts for the coming Holy Sacrifice on Sunday in the three major rites of the church, the ancient Roman rite, the Byzantine rite, aka the Greek rite for the Divine Liturgy, as well as the new mass, the Novus Ordo. Now, uh, I am on retreat right now, so this is not live. Uh, so I've recorded this beforehand. And as a result, I also cannot cover the news. So I'm sorry for I, I cannot cover the news, but I wanted to emphasize something else instead, which I think is more important. And that is gratitude. And this is something that I'd like to bring into this show the very first one we did, we just kind of covered the news, talked about what was going on. Because we want to take what's going on and we want to take it, you know, if it troubles us or whatever it may be, whatever's going on in the world, we want to bring that to the holy sacrifice. Because that's where it belongs. When we go to the holy sacrifice, we are offering the whole cosmos to God in Christ, because each one of us, men and women, enter into the priesthood of Adam and Eve, which being image bearers of God, we become sons of God. And in Christ, we offer the whole cosmos. And that's the cosmic nature of the liturgy. And so we need to take all of the things that are going on and offer the holy sacrifice. But in particular, let's look at our week. Let's look at what happened in our week and all the mercies of God in this week. And let's give thanks for that because that's what the Eucharist means, giving thanks. There's a, a particularly powerful prayer I want to share. Now, this is this is published in the... Um, the Manual of Prayers, Tan, Tan Books put this version out. There's also Benedictus Books has the um, a, another version that's a little bit more faithful to the original. So there's kind of two versions here. But this is the Manual of Prayers for the Catholic Laity when the, when the, uh, the Baltimore Council, I believe it was the Fourth Council, they put out the Baltimore Catechism. They also put out this this manual of prayers for laity. So this is the Baltimore prayer book, basically. 
and in this prayer book, there are morning and evening prayers that have always struck me powerfully. And there's this prayer for gratitude, this prayer of gratitude in the evening prayers, which I particularly love. And it goes like this. Enable me, O oh my God, to return thee thanks as I ought for all thine inestimable blessings and favors. Thou hast thought of me and loved me from all eternity. Thou hast formed me out of nothing. Thou hast delivered up thy beloved son to the ignominious death of the cross for my redemption. Thou hast made me a member of thy holy church. Thou hast preserved me from falling into the abyss of eternal misery, when my sins have provoked thee to punish me. And thou hast graciously continued to spare me, even though I have not ceased to offend thee. What return, O oh my God, can I make for thy, all thine innumerable blessings, and particularly for the favors of this day? All ye angels and saints unite with me in praising the God of mercies, who is so bountiful to so unworthy a creature. So I, I've always been struck by that because it's so humble. It's so beseeching of the Lord. It's so uh, happy to be spared by such a merciful father and knowing how much we deserve the fires of hell. And so we need to really give thanks, give thanks for so many mercies and begin with the greatest mercies, which are the faith. So take a minute, instead of going over the news, because we can't, because this is recorded, let's think about what we're grateful for. Bring this to the holy sacrifice. Um, I'm on retreat because I, I need to go on retreat and, and just unplug from the internet. I, I do this every week. I do this twice a week on Sundays and on Wednesdays, just unplug from the internet because my job is on the internet. And I do think the internet is sort of intrinsically spiritually uh, deadening or something like that. Screens, they keep us in unreality. But at the same time, we also enter into a reality that we cannot enter otherwise, which is connecting in the mystical body of Christ across the earth. And this is, this is, the, this is my joy with Meaning of Catholic Guild is connecting with our brethren across these United States and Canada, brethren in uh, Trinidad, brethren in Philippines, Australia, in Europe. All of these brethren who are part of the mystical body of Christ, but we never have contact with them unless we go to them in person. Obviously, that's the most real thing. But through this modern technology, this is this is the this is the plus which I, I thoroughly enjoy, and it, it gives me great joy to connect with all of you, Guild members. And just a reminder, as a part of the Meaning of Catholic Apostolate, we invoke our patrons, our lay patrons, every day for the needs of the Apostolate and the needs of the Guild members. Our, our lay patrons are Our Lady of Victory, Mary, Queen of the Home, St. Joseph, Terror of Demons, and St. Anthony of the Desert. We invoke for clergy and seminarians. And if you'd like to join our penance sodality, I encourage you to do so. We offer up extra penances for clergy and seminarians as lay people, as a part of our lay apostolate. So let's talk about the gospels coming up. This is the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost, AKA the 29th Sunday, Tempus Paranum. Today, I'm going to share a little bit about uh, we're, we're focusing on gratitude. And so when we go through these different gospels and liturgical texts, like I said, I don't want to go into polemics here. I, I had, there's plenty of my content. I go into all the different polemical aspects of the liturgical debate. You can go to my content in other areas. I I'm in the mass of the ages documentary, you know, in my opinion about this stuff, but you know, there's basically 1 billion Catholics who are in the Novus Ordo, and we need to be grateful for what the new mass gives us. And in fact, there is a very traditional character to the Novus Ordo lectionary. And we're going to talk about that today, and we can give thanks for that. And that's a great thing. And that's something that's wonderful. And it's an immense blessing that we have that. And that so many Catholics have that. 
So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But first, in the ancient Roman rite, we have the gospel of the Pharisees and the Herodians attempting to catch our Lord in his speech. This is the render unto Caesar gospel. But in particular, I think for us, it holds us a great amount of wisdom. The very first verse says, Then the Pharisees going consulted among themselves how to ensnare him in his speech. And I think this is important to consider because this is the way that the devils work against us. The devils attempt to ensnare us in our speech. As the Apostle St. James says in his great epistle, the tongue no one can tame. No one can tame the tongue. Proverbs says, a fool delights in airing his own opinions, but he who keeps his words is wise. St. James also says that those who teach will be judged more harshly. That's me. So pray for me. But if we open our mouths to speak, St. Peter's epistle says it should be as the oracles of God. But the problem is that the internet incentivizes and creates uh, serotonin attachments to various backbiting mortal sins. This is where I want to uh, direct everyone's attention to this article that I wrote. Uh, Don't let social media send you to hell. This article is contained in my new book, When the Gates of Hell Prevail. But this talks about uh, some of the, the issues, the spiritual perils of social media. Like I said in the beginning, there's a great boon that we have in connecting with the body of Christ throughout the, the globe. But there's also a great threat, a great threat to our eternal salvation because of the mortal sin of railing and reviling railing and reviling and this is a mortal this is a grave sin this is something that we can get into in the internet very easily because the internet incentivizes us to do so we get more clicks we get more likes we get more this that the other thing if we do this sin so it's a really terrible place to be but there's great good that come out, can kind of come out of it nonetheless, but this is something we need to be careful of. That's why at the meaning of Catholic, if you go to meaningofcatholic.com, you scroll down, there's the internet promise. This is why we have the internet promise. And the very first stipulation of the internet promise is, I will never speak a word on the internet that is not in accord with truth and charity. As it is written, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall render an account for it on the day of judgment. Matthew 12, 36. We should be trembling with fear when we go towards the internet to try to speak and say something. So if this is, if you are a pious soul, if you are a zealous Catholic and you want to use the internet for good instead of evil, this is what Meaning of Catholic is all about. So you join the guild, meaningofcatholic.com slash register. That's what we're trying to do with Meaning of Catholic is use this tool for the glory of God. So moving to our Byzantine rite, uh, it is the uh, another gospel from St. Luke. And this is one of the mentions by the evangelist Luke of the fires of hell. I'm, I'm currently reading Dan Burke's new book, the truth about hell that'll be out, I think, in December. And he makes he references how um, our Lord references hell numerous times in the Gospels, but chiefly in St. Matthew's Gospel. So St. Matthew's Gospel has nine references, but Mark, Luke, and John only have one each. But this is one of them. And it's the story of Lazarus and the rich man. And it's a particularly powerful account. You know the story. Lazarus goes to heaven. The rich man goes to hell. And I've always been struck by the last verse where the rich man is begging Abraham to send Lazarus 
to cause Lazarus to rise from the dead and then go to his brethren to warn them about the fires of hell. But Abraham says, they have Moses and the prophets. Listen to them. But they, but the rich man says, well, they, but they will listen if someone raises from the dead. And then Abraham says, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they listen, even if someone raises from the dead. And this points to the, the hardness of our hearts. In that, you know, the Pharisees and Sadducees and the Herodians and everyone, they all saw these miracles. They, and then the gospel even said that they sought to kill Lazarus. So they saw the miracles but their hearts were so hardened. So let us pray and ask God for mercy to give us, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, renew a right spirit within me. The, the, the true childlikeness of heart where we can, we can be satisfied with the ordinary miracles and we can take joy in the ordinary miracles. We, this is the heart of a child. We can take joy in Moses and the prophets. We don't need this extra miracle for our faith. We can take joy in, in, in the sunrise and how incredibly beautiful that is and know that there is a God and have faith in him and have hope in him. We don't need an extra huge thing because we have the heart of a child. And that's a challenge, but I think it, it brings us to a much a, a deeper place of peace every day. This is like what we we're talking about with gratitude in the beginning. Like we, we need to have gratitude for the beauty of this sunrise. God gives us, depending on where you live, not everyone gets to see the sunrise or the sunset, but I, I am blessed. I'm very thankful that I'm blessed. I, I'm not in the country, but I can at least see a good chunk of the sunrise and sunset every day. I've got a lot of trees obscuring it, but to me, it's, it's, it's such a glory every single day. And it, it's just an amazing, wondrous world of beauty and and wonder that God has created. We need to be grateful for that and give thanks for these ordinary miracles. So the new lectionary of the Roman Rite, the uh, Novus Ordo Mise. So the way this works on, there's two different cycles to the, to the, uh, the new lectionary. One is for weekdays. We're only focusing on Sunday Gospels. And the Sunday Gospels have a three-year cycle. So there's year A, B, and C. And uh, year A goes through Matthew. So it focuses all the Sunday Gospels on Matthew. Year B focuses on Mark. Year C on Luke. And so we're currently uh, 29th Sunday, Tempus Paranum. And we're in year B for the Gospel of St. Mark. And the Gospel itself... Uh, speaks about sort of implies this child likeness i think there's a there's an ultimate alternate synoptic gospel that tells the same story with with um the the uh, as our lord brings a child in i think but this is when the sons of zebedee ask for to sit on the lord's right hand and he's the lord says you don't know what you're asking do you can you drink the chalice that i'm about to drink And this is pointing to that deeper gratitude for the sacrament of the present moment, especially in suffering. And that's when it that's when it gets really difficult. So we need to be giving thanks in the sacrament of the present moment. By the way, sacrament of the present moment, that phrase is coming from um, the book. Uh, I don't have it readily available, but it's from the book, um, Abandonment to Divine Providence. So he talks about this concept of the sacrament of the present moment. <clears throat> and so being in the sacrament of the present moment, we surrender and we give thanks and we have joy and peace in this, the beauty of this moment, as I would discuss the ordinary miracles, but also the suffering. And that's when it's very difficult. That's the when it's the most difficult, but it's when it's the most meritorious. And this is what this gospel points to on the 29th Sunday, Tempus Per Anum. But let me just make a few comments in closing about the traditional character of the new lectionary. We need to, we need to appreciate the fact that this mic always turns down for some reason. We need to appreciate the fact that truly traditional, if we wanted to be truly traditional, we would need to restore an oral culture. 
in my my first book on the Boldly Bible, we talk about an oral culture. An oral culture is where people cannot read. They memorize everything. And in a traditional culture, first of all, we would be memorizing the whole Old Testament. And the way that the Gospels and Epistles work is that we would get everybody together and then you, we would read through the Gospel of St. Mark straight through, beginning to the end, which would take, uh, you know, six to eight hours. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, maybe less, maybe more. So it would be a number of hours where we would just read through that all the way straight through. We'd read it out loud to everybody else. That would be the traditional way of doing the lectionary. So what I'm saying is a continuous reading where there's no pericopes. So like the, the annual lectionaries in the ancient Roman rite, the Latin mass, and in the Byzantine rite, they have an annual lectionary, which is, which is a great benefit to me. I, I love the annual lectionary. That's certainly my preference because I love going to the same Sunday. Like one of my favorite Sundays is the third Sunday after Epiphany. Every year we get the same gospel. I love Quinquagesima Sunday. Every year we get the same gospel. I love that. But at the same time, there is another traditional character. There's another tradition of reading a single text continuously, meaning without a pericope, without a break between different sections, just like beginning to the end. Because that's the way it was written. And actually, that was the way it was designed to be read. Because when they wrote the Gospels or they wrote the epistles, as St. As Paul himself says in one of his epistles, he says, read this epistle in front of everybody. Because that's what they did. They sent a letter and then the church got together and then they would just read the whole thing beginning to the end to everybody else. That's how it worked. Now, in the there is a traditional lectionary for... Um, among some rabbinic Jews. So there's a rabbinic tradition, which probably dates from before our Lord. So it probably dates to BC. And this is reading through the entire Torah beginning to the end. And so every Saturday, you would read through another section of the Torah, Genesis through De Deuteronomy. And this is something that Hebrew Catholics, they've gotten permission from the bishops to have this they have this traditional lectionary on their saturdays that so they they observe a certain aspect of the shabbat as well as the lord's day and so they have they have this torah lectionary and then in the torah lectionary they have this continuous reading so every every saturday they go they go to the next section and they read the next section of the torah and they read the next section so it's from the beginning to the end so that is that is something of what the new lectionary is doing because it's attempting to create a more continuous reading. And you get this in particular in the weekday readings because the weekday readings go pretty much through the Gospels. They don't do everything. Yes, there are certain difficult phrases that are taken out. But for one thing, you can't you just can't fit everything. If you want to be truly traditional, you'd have to read everything through straight through, like I said. But there is something to be said for reading straight through. There is a traditional character to that. And so there's there's so what I'm what I'm trying to emphasize here is there are two different ways of doing things that they both have pros and cons, basically. They both have pros and cons. And the, the I think a tradition, what is a traditional attitude to the diversity of rights? And this is what I what I read. I read from Orientalium Ecclesiarum because that document does give us a traditional attitude. And the traditional attitude is that the, as long as orthodoxy is preserved, that's the main key, assuming we've got orthodoxy. Now, I understand, as I said, I'm not going to de deal with the polemics, so we're just going to set that aside for a minute. But assuming orthodoxy is preserved, the diversity of rights is something to manifest the unity. So this is something that we need to be grateful for. And we need to be, give, give thanks for what we have. Many Christians don't even have Bibles, much less a lectionary. You know, Christians in Saudi Arabia, they, not, they might not even be able to get baptized because they have to be secret. Like these, these Mohammedan converts who 
go on the internet. Another plus of the internet is that Mohammedans and Mohammedan countries, they can go on the internet and they can hear me talking, for example, not, not that I'm like the guy they want to talk to or whatever, but anybody, they, they can find Christianity on the internet and they can do it privately. Like the pornographers created smartphones because they wanted to spread pornography, but God brought good out of evil because now a Mohammedan can go in the privacy of his own home and not look at evil images, but rather look up a Bible study. And that's his only access to the Holy Scriptures, his only access to Christianity. And you can do it secretly so that nobody kills him. So we need to be grateful for what we have. Let's be grateful. Let's pray for our brethren who are persecuted, especially in places like China. This is something that's been in a lot of the Catholic news. Um, but we also have uh, the, the country, modern country of Lebanon. It's been recently drawn into war. Uh, has 40% of the population of Lebanon is Christian. That's a huge chunk. That's similar to Egypt. Egypt is, a, Egypt is what, more like 10 to 20% in Egypt. Um, there's only 1% to 2% of the state of Israel is Christian. Uh, but there are uh, also hundreds of thousands of Palestinian Christians. So... Let's be grateful for what we have. Let's pray for our brethren in harm's way that they can have strength to drink the chalice of Christ of, in his sufferings. So let's invoke our lay patrons and let's prepare our souls for the holy sacrifice. In nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tua mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. Mary, Queen of the Home, pray for us. Saint Joseph, Terror of Demons, pray for us. Saint Anthony of the Desert, pray for all clergy and seminarians. Have mercy upon meaning of Catholic apostolate and all the guild members and all their intentions. In nomine Patris, et fidei, et spiritus sancti, amen. Jesus is king.